Jesus and the Apostles' View of the Bible Memory Text But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God, Matthew 4, 4 New King James Version the Bible has been largely reinterpreted through the lens of a philosophy that questions both its inspiration and its authority. The Bible is seen as merely the ideas of human beings living in a relatively primitive culture who couldn't possibly understand the world as we do today. The supernatural element has been either downplayed or even removed from the picture, turning the Bible into a document that, instead of being God's view of humanity, has become humanity's view of God. The result is that, for many, the Bible has become largely irrelevant in an age of Darwinian thinking and modern philosophy. We completely reject that position. We can see the inspired way to view the entire scripture by studying how Jesus and the Apostles understood the Old Testament. In this presentation we will see how did they relate to the people, places, and events described, and what were their assumptions and subsequent methods of interpretation. Let's follow them and their understanding, in contrast to the misconceptions of uninspired humans whose assumptions lead only to skepticism and doubt about the Word of God. How Jesus Related to the Bible a pivotal moment in Earth's history came when Satan tempted Jesus after his baptism and wilderness experience. Just 40 days earlier, the Father said at Jesus' baptism, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased, Matthew 3:17. Satan now challenged this position. Was Jesus who his Father said he was? The issue was the reliability of God's Word. Read Matthew 4 verses 3 to 4, 5 to 7 and 8 to 11. Jesus was led by the Spirit into the Judean wilderness, where he was tempted by Satan. When tempted by appetite, Jesus responds, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God, Matthew 4 4, New King James Version. In his response, Jesus quotes a passage from Deuteronomy 8:3 that he might make you know that man shall not live by bread alone, but man lives by every word that proceeds from the mouth of the Lord. The context of this passage is God's sustaining providence to ancient Israel when they wandered in the wilderness for forty years. God humbled them and sustained them so that they would rely wholly on him. By quoting this scripture, Jesus is saying, my Father who sustained Israel for forty years will sustain me. I trust in his word alone because I know that he is not only the source of sustenance, but the source of life itself. The deeper implication is that Jesus is submitting himself to his Father, just as ancient Israel was taught to submit to the word of God. Jesus speaks not of his own authority but from the authority of scripture as spoken by Moses. The argument in Deuteronomy is that because God sustained Israel and preserved them as his people to enter the promised land, they shall keep the commandments of the Lord your God, to walk in his ways and to fear him, Deuteronomy 8:6, New King James Version. When tempted by appetite, Jesus responds, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God, Matthew 4 4, New King James Version. Jesus points back to the living word and its ultimate, divine source. He affirms the authority of Scripture. When tempted with the world's kingdoms and glory, Jesus responds, It is written, You shall worship the Lord your God and him only you shall serve. Matthew 4.10, Luke 4.8, New King James Version. 
true worship is focused on God and not on anyone else, and that submission to his word is true worship. With the temptation on the love of display and on presumption, Jesus responds, It is written again, You shall not tempt the Lord your God, Matthew 4 7, New King James Version, also Luke 4 12. In all three temptations, Jesus responds with the words it is written. Jesus goes right to the word of God and nothing else to deal with the attacks and deceptions of Satan. The lesson is that the Bible, and the Bible alone, is the highest authority and the strongest foundation of faith for Jesus. We must accept the certain guidance of the word of God before any other opinion. Jesus met Satan with the words of scripture. It is written, he said. In every temptation the weapon of his warfare was the word of God. Satan demanded of Christ a miracle as a sign of his divinity. But that which is greater than all miracles, a firm reliance upon a thus saith the Lord, was a sign that could not be contract overt. So long as Christ held to this position, the tempter could gain no advantage. Ellen G. White, The Desire of Ages, page 120 how do we approach temptation today? Do we have scripture hidden in our hearts that we may call upon in order to respond to the tempter? We are never forced to submit our wills to temptation, and we have the same resource as Jesus did his word. Greatest defense against Satan's attacks. Not by opinion. Not by an elaborate, convoluted argument. Not by words of personal animosity but by the simple yet profound words of scripture. Scripture has the greatest authority and the greatest power. And he said to them, It is written, My house shall be called a house of prayer, but you have made it a den of thieves. What important lessons can we learn from Jesus about how to relate to the word of God? Why is it dangerous to be ignorant about the word of God? Psalm 119 105, John 12 35b, Matthew 22 29. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Psalm 119 105. Walk while you have the light, lest darkness overtake you, he who walks in darkness does not know where he is going. John 12 35b. Jesus answered and said to them, You are mistaken, not knowing the scriptures nor the power of God. Matthew 22 29. In Matthew 5 verses 17 to 18 Jesus said, Don't suppose that I came to do away with the law and the prophets. I did not come to do away with them, but to give them their full meaning. Heaven and earth may disappear. But I promise you that not even a period or comma will ever disappear from the law. Everything written in it must happen. C.E.B. Verse 19. If you reject even the least important command in the law and teach others to do the same, you will be the least important person in the kingdom of heaven. But if you obey and teach others its commands, you will have an important place in the kingdom. C.E.B. Verse 20. You must obey God's commands better than the Pharisees and the teachers of the law obey them. If you don't, I promise you that you will never get into the kingdom of heaven. C.E.B. Verse 21. You know that our ancestors were told, Do not murder and a murderer must be brought to trial. C.E.B. Verse 22. But I promise you that if you are angry with someone, you will have to stand trial. If you call someone a fool, you will be taken to court. And if you say that someone is worthless, you will be in danger of the fires of hell. C.E.B. Verses 27 to 28. You have heard that it was said to those of old, You shall not commit adultery. But I say to you that whoever looks at a woman to lust for her has already committed adultery with her in his heart. What important truth is Jesus stating in these verses? Jesus taught his disciples obedience to the word of God and the law. There is never a hint of him doubting the authority or relevance of scripture. On the contrary, 
he constantly referred to it as the source of divine authority. Jesus saw the scriptures as a guide that can lead us in this life. He was not giving new instructions when saying but I say to you, Matthew 5 verses 22, 28, 32, 39, 44. He was clarifying what Moses and the prophets had written and explaining its actual meaning. When Jesus was asked which was the most important rule, Matthew 22 verses 36 to 40, he answered with the scriptures again, Deuteronomy 6 5 and Leviticus 19 18. In Matthew 22 verses 37 to 38, Jesus said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like it, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Jesus summarizes the Ten Commandments. Jesus focuses on the Old Testament law and elevates it to the highest level. Many Christians incorrectly have concluded, that here a new commandment is given that the Old Testament law is now replaced by the New Testament Gospel. But the fact is that what Jesus is teaching based on the Old Testament law, that Christ had unveiled and revealed the law more fully, that these two commandments are summarizing the Ten Commandments, the first four of which focus on the human-divine relationship, and the second six of which focus on human interpersonal relationships, that on these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets, Matthew 22:40, Revised Standard Version, that Jesus also uplifts the entire Old Testament. When he says, the law and the prophets, for this is a shortened way of referring to the law, prophets, and writings, or all three divisions of the Old Testament. The scribes and the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. Therefore whatever they tell you to observe, that observe, and do, but do not do according to their works, for they say, and do not do. How did Jesus respond to those who wanted to place tradition before the clear teaching of the Word of God? In Matthew 15 verses 3 to 9. Why do you also transgress the commandment of God because of your tradition? For God commanded, saying, Honor your father and your mother, and, he who curses father or mother, let him be put to death. But you say, Whoever says to his father or mother, whatever profit you might have received from me is a gift to God then he need not honor his father or mother. Thus you have made the commandment of God of no effect by your tradition. Hypocrites! Well did Isaiah prophesy about you, saying, These people draw near to me with their mouth, and honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. And in vain they worship me, teaching as doctrines the commandments of men. He Christ pointed to the scriptures as of unquestionable authority, and we should do the same. The Bible is to be presented as the word of the infinite God, as the end of all controversy and the foundation of all faith. Ellen G. White, Christ's Object Lessons, pages 39-40 to The New Testament is an extension, explanation, and fulfillment of the Old Testament. It interprets the Old Testament in light of the death, resurrection, and glorification of Jesus. Then he said to them, These are the words which I spoke to you while I was still with you, that all things must be fulfilled which were written in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms concerning me. Luke 24:44. How does Jesus use the scriptures to teach the disciples the gospel message? In Luke 24 verses 13 to 18, we read, now behold, two of them were traveling that same day to a village called Emmaus, which was seven miles from Jerusalem. And they talked together of all these things which had happened. So it was, while they conversed and reasoned, that Jesus himself drew near and went with them. But their eyes were restrained, so that they did not know him. And he said to them, What kind of conversation is this that you have with one another as you walk and are sad? Then the one whose name was Cleopas answered and said to him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem, and have you not known the things which happened there in these days? In Luke 24 verses 19 to 27 we read, And he said to them, What things? 
So they said to him, The things concerning Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how the chief priests and our rulers delivered him to be condemned to death, and crucified him. But we were hoping that it was he who was going to redeem Israel. Indeed, besides all this, today is the third day since these things happened. Yes, and certain women of our company, who arrived at the tomb early, astonished us. When they did not find his body, they came saying that they had also seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. And certain of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but him they did not see. Then he said to them, O foolish ones, and slow of heart to believe in all that the prophets have spoken. Ought not the Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded to them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. After the death of Christ, his followers were confused and in doubt. They could not understand Christ's death on the cross. They had believed with the rest of Judaism that the Messiah would establish an earthly kingdom that would free them from the oppression of the Romans. Now that Jesus was dead and buried, they were devastated. The answer to their disappointment was the same as the answer to the early Advent believers. It was to turn back to scripture. Jesus showed them the way. In the 24th chapter of Luke, we see that Jesus appears to them twice, first to two who are on the road to Emmaus, and then to others later. On two separate occasions, Jesus explains how all has been fulfilled from the Old Testament prophecies. According to Luke 24:27, Revised Standard Version, and beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded to them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. In Luke 24, 44, 45, Revised Standard Version, he says, these are my words that everything written about me in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, RSV. What is referred to as all the scriptures in Luke 24:27 emphasized in the second passage in Luke 24:44 as the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms, the three divisions of the Old Testament. The Hebrew Bible, the Old Testament, has the following structure. Jesus saw the scriptures as inspired. He understood that all scripture was authoritative and the basis for his authority, ministry, and mission. He relies on the authority of scripture to explain how these things were foretold hundreds of years earlier. Jesus is teaching the disciples by example. We are to expound all scripture to bring understanding and power to the new converts throughout the world. In Matthew 28 verses 18-20, Jesus says that all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. What does Jesus teach and command? He taught that his teachings are based on all of scripture, that it is upon the prophetic authority of the word that he came, that it is in fulfillment of the prophecies in scripture that he submitted to his Father. In John 5 verses 39 to 40, Jesus said, You search the scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life, and these are they which testify of me. But you are not willing to come to me that you may have life. How does this warning of Jesus relate to our lives today? We have to search the scripture to know him. We have to come to him to have life. And many lepers were in Israel in the time of Elisha the prophet, and none of them was cleansed except Naaman the Syrian. Luke 4:27. Jesus taught, that the Bible is the word of God, that what it says is synonymous with what God says. That its origin is found in God and, that it contains ultimate authority for every aspect of life, that God worked through history to reveal his will to humanity through the Bible. Besides considering the Bible as the word of God and the foundation of every doctrine and guide for life, Jesus also considered it a historical book. 
he referred to the people in the Bible as actual people who lived in actual places and were part of actual events. Jesus refers to biblical history. In Matthew 19 verses 4 to 5, and Mark 10 verses 6 to 8, he refers to the Creator. In Luke 11:51, he refers to Abel. In Matthew 24:38, he refers to Noah and the flood. In John 3:14, he refers to Moses. In Matthew 12 verses 3 to 4, he refers to David. In Matthew 12 verses 38 to 40, he refers to Jonah. In Luke 4 verses 25 to 27, he refers to Elijah. Jesus mentioned Adam and Eve, Abel, Noah, Sodom and Gomorrah, Lot's wife, David, Solomon, Elijah, Elisha, Jonah, Zechariah, Isaiah. He mentioned their stories as an example to follow or to avoid, as a symbol of what was going to happen, or as a source of doctrine. Jesus consistently treats Old Testament people, places, and events as historical truth. In a message of warning, Jesus also describes the days of Noah. They were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day that Noah entered the ark, and did not know until the flood came and took them all away, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be, Matthew 24 verses 38 to 39, New King James Version. Here, we have indication that Jesus was referring to this mighty act of God's judgment as a historical event. How should we relate to people who view the stories of the Bible as myths? The New Testament writers approach the Bible the same way that Jesus does. In matters of doctrine, ethics, and prophetic fulfillment, the Old Testament for them was the authoritative word of God. We find nothing, anywhere, in what these men say or do that challenges either the authority or authenticity of any part of the Bible. In the following passages, notice how closely related the scriptures are to the voice of God himself. In Acts 4 verses 24 to 26, we read, So when they heard that, they raised their voice to God with one accord and said, Lord, you are God, who made heaven and earth and the sea, and all that is in them, who by the mouth of your servant David have said, Why did the nations rage, and the people plot vain things? The kings of the earth took their stand, and the rulers were gathered together against the Lord and against his Christ. In Acts 4 verses 24 to 26, the disciples, acknowledged God as the creator and for speaking through David his servant, acknowledged David's words are God's words. In Acts 13 verses 32 to 33, we read, And we declare to you glad tidings that promise which was made to the fathers. God has fulfilled this for us their children, in that he has raised up Jesus. As it is also written in the second psalm, you are my son, today I have begotten you. In Acts 13 verses 34 to 36, we read, And that he raised him from the dead, no more to return to corruption, he has spoken thus, I will give you the sure mercies of David. Therefore he also says in another psalm, You will not allow your holy one to see corruption. For David, after he had served his own generation by the will of God, fell asleep, was buried with his fathers, and saw corruption. In Acts 13 verses 32 to 36, David is quoted again by Paul, but his words are attributed to God, for verse 32 says, What God promised to the fathers, revised standard version. In Romans 9 17 we read, For the scripture says to the Pharaoh, For this very purpose I have raised you up, that I may show my power in you, and that my name may be declared in all the earth. In Romans 9 17, Paul uses the term scripture, saying, For the scripture says to the Pharaoh, NKJV, which could actually be stated, For God says to the Pharaoh, in Romans 9:17, Paul uses the term scripture, saying, For the scripture says to the Pharaoh, and KJV, which could actually be stated, For God says to the Pharaoh. In Galatians 3:8, we read, And the scripture, foreseeing that God would justify the Gentiles by faith, preached the gospel to Abraham beforehand, saying, In you all the nations shall be blessed. In Galatians 3:8, the subject scripture is used in place of God showing just how closely tied the word of God is to God himself. In Galatians 3 8, God is identified with the scripture. The scripture is the word of God. Every author of the New Testament used the Old Testament as the word of God. They accepted the words of the prophets as such. They used stories of people like David, Lot, and Abraham for teaching, Romans 11 9, 2 Peter 2 7, James 2 23. In fact, 
the New Testament writers uniformly rely on the Old Testament as the Word of God. There are hundreds of quotes in the New Testament from the Old Testament. The disciples took the teaching of Jesus to heart and made it the core of the Gospels and letters to the Church. Matthew quoted extensively from the prophecies of the Old Testament. Luke began his Gospel with the genealogies, demonstrating that Jesus was the Messiah. Paul affirms that all Scripture is given by inspiration of God, and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work, 2 Timothy 3 verses 16-17, New King James Version. In Hebrews 11, Paul lists many of the men and women who were heroes of the faith, doing so in a way that takes their stories and original settings in the Old Testament at face value. Never do we find any New Testament writer doubting the authenticity, historicity, prophecies, or teachings of the Bible. They do not view the scripture accounts in any way other than as authoritative. The examples of Jesus and the Apostles give us the clearest evidence of how to approach the scriptures. They allowed scripture to interpret scripture. They relied on scripture as their defense during temptation and required a clear thus saith the Lord in the plainest understanding of the biblical text and its applications. One scholar has compiled a list of 2,688 specific references. 400 from Isaiah. 370 from the Psalms, 220 from Exodus, and so on. If one were to add to this list allusions, themes, and motifs, the number would greatly increase. The books are replete with references to the Old Testament prophecies that are often introduced with the phrase, it is written, Matt 2 5, Mark 1 2, Mark 7 6, Luke 2 23, Luke 3 4, Romans 3 4, Romans 8 36, Romans 9 33, 1 Corinthians 1 19, Galatians 4:27, 1 Peter 1:16. All of this confirms that the Old Testament scriptures are the foundation upon which the teachings of Jesus and the apostles rest. Some Christians only accept the New Testament as authoritative and relevant for followers of Jesus. What can we learn from our study today? Why do New Testament writers make 2688 specific references to the Hebrew scriptures? They followed the example of Jesus accepting the Bible as he did. We should also accept the whole Bible as the foundation of our faith and beliefs.